There's the surface web, there's the deep web, and then there's the dark web. And um, what I'm particularly interested in is, is the surface web, how it's used um, in dark ways, for instance, using technology such as Skype, um, such as Zoom, Uvu, TeamViewer, these webcam applications where individuals can share drug experiences, but they're not necessarily, um, you're, you're not necessarily able to, to track their, um, their activities because these are invite-only platforms. Um, and then, of course, there's the, you, I mean, you could call that the deep web if you'd like, but I, I personally like to think it's a surface web because it's kind of up there on the top, but it's used in, in, a, in, a, in a clandestine kind of way where you have you know, networks of um, you know, 2 to 25 and more individuals performing drug experiences together, but there's no URL address to go to, there's no website to go to, it's, it's, you're invited, if you're not invited, you don't have access to that environment. What I'm seeing a lot of is, for instance, with Grindr, which is a six million member, maybe more audience now, there'll be links to a person's Facebook account um, or links to a Twitter account or maybe links to an Instagram account and you can track the, the, the activities of these men across the different networks that they belong to. Um, uh, you can even use, for instance, Google reverse image search. Um, just the, the photograph of, a, of an individual's face, if you upload it into Google reverse image search, now you can find their Facebook page, their, their, um, their Instagram, if they have that same photo uploaded. And so this, this perception of anonymity um, you know, really needs to be addressed if these individuals don't know that they're actually traceable through the images that they're putting up.